Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So for this week now I'd like to finish off the um, last week that we'll be talking about the head rig. And we went through various different elements last week and the week before outlining how to create your hierarchy for your head rig, how to cut the elements off at the edge of the face automatically, and how to um, do a kind of a cool nose that will reveal itself when it goes off the edge. Um, and so the last thing to really complete this discussion is how to morph or deform the actual shape of the head if you do need to do so. Um, it really depends on your character rig if you need to do so or not because some simplified shapes where the heads are very round will not require a new shaped head when you are changing the direction of the head. But if you are doing something that looks a little bit more realistic like this one, then you do want to have um, the shape of the head itself uh, change over time. So let's think about this and, and how are we going to accomplish this. I'll just um, select my head layer here and here's a, a quick tip if you select the head layer with the transform tool that also selects it in the timeline so I know I can go to the drawing view and it will see that drawing right away. And I did create two different versions of this head now. Um, so one of them as you can see if I zoom in on this one is more of a front or profile view head and the and, oh, sorry of a three-quarter profile view head and then the other one is a straight-on head and um, what's nice about this is that the way that I created the second head is simply by moving the original head so let me do it again I will just move this over one and I'll just duplicate the drawing because if I do a duplicate drawing then I have the original one to work with but it's now a new number and then if I take my contour editor, I can use my contour editor tool to adjust the shape of the line and to get the new one so that, and if I need to, I can, you know, hold down command or control to add points and um, then get the shape looking the way that I want it to look there. So it's very easy to go from one head to the other head and so on and so forth. Maybe I want to just uh, pull the chin out a little bit more on this one. But what's really nice about this is that if you do this, and I'm using a pencil line so it's very easy to drag on the line, and I am doing this in Harmony Standalone, although you can do the same thing in Animate and Animate Pro. Um, let me just rearrange some of these toolbars. I get rid of some of these toolbars so that I can have some more room up here. And I can do that just by right clicking in the area around the top um, to get rid of uh, some of that stuff. So, all right. So. So I've got now these two heads, and because I just used the contour editor and I did a duplicate drawing, the drawings themselves are very similar. And because they're very similar, it is going to morph very well from one drawing to the other. So it looks like on the one that I did before, I also moved the chin, um, this part of the chin, the draw out, out a little bit, which is probably a good idea just to make them not look too similar. So there we go, something like that. And um, because you just use the, the contractor to move the, the pieces around, it is going to morph well together. So let's double check. Let's go back to our camera view. So now I've got my two heads. And um, I've got a variety of different layers in there. So what I can do is if I want to see all the other layers in here as well, um, I actually didn't finish rigging this character. So it would be nice if they were all within one uh, master peg so that I could collapse them all together. So let's just do that really quick. Um, and I know that I'm approaching this kind of by doing bits and pieces of the rigging in these tutorials so there are some things that are more finished and less finished but as I go I'm trying to finish this character off so that we can use her as an example and she is somebody that since I've done this one myself I could make available to people who are using Harmony um, so let's say okay let's do this is just gonna call this my master peg and um, then I can just use this to connect to all of those layers that haven't been connected to yet. Um, some of these layers here don't have um, don't have their own peg layers on them, and I do like to animate with peg layers. So I can just select here, and if I hold down Command or Control as I'm selecting, it's going to allow me to add to my selection. So then I can just make sure that I'm selecting all of these um, elements here that don't have layers yet. And then I can use that that um, add peg, um, or sorry, I used the I hit the wrong key there. Undo. I can use the add peg button, which is the next one over to the add drawing button. And if you use the add peg button, it's going to make a peg layer that's going to be a, 
a parent of all of the selected layers. For those of you who are using the newer versions of Harmony Standalone, um, you can do Control Shift P or Command Shift P to add um, pegs the same way that you do here. So now um, that I've got those ones in there, and actually I am going to use my uh, Command Shift P to do it just because it puts them in the right place in, in Harmony, but that's something that uh, will be added to Animate Pro and Animate when it comes out. But um, all right, so now pretty much all of them, let me just do it on here. They've all got their peg layers now. So now that all of those elements have their peg layers in them, I can just connect my master to those layers. So let's zoom out here. And then I can drag the pipes down Whoops, into those other elements. So just to make this easier, I'll just zoom in on here. Sometimes when you get uh, more complex looking rigs, it is a good idea to go and group some of these elements together in subgroups. That way it just makes it a little bit easier to work with, um, but it's not strictly necessary. I've seen some studios that work with everything kind of in one character group, and then I see other ones that are using subgroups within that to group together arm elements, torso elements, and so on and so forth. Um, and it's kind of up to your personal preference on whether you prefer to have everything in one main group or if you like to have subgroups. I personally like to have subgroups just because I find that it helps it to get organized, but on the other hand, it means that at a glance you don't see the entire structure. So, I mean, there's positives and negatives as usual when it comes to rigging. Rigging is very much a, rigging and compositing is very much a personal thing. Like, there's lots of different ways of accomplishing what it is that you want to accomplish. So, um, now as I'm doing this, I can add all these elements in here. And um, you, if you want to double check to see whether the elements are all in there, then you can just um, select that peg with your transform tool and I can see that I am missing a couple of elements. So then I can go back into my network view over here and drag those elements in that I missed. Because there are a couple of elements that weren't in my facial features peg. I think I'm missing the face somewhere. Oops. Let's see. Okay, so let's just try again. I'm going to select that master peg. Yeah, it looks like I'm missing that head layer and the uh, collarbone. Oh, yeah, here's my head layer. So I am missing this one doesn't have a peg on it. Let's add a peg and attach that to my master. And I can, I can go back later and adjust certain elements in my rig. Until my rig is really completely finished, I can always go back and make adjustments. In fact, a lot of people will continue to make adjustments on the rig as they're working in the production. But um, the only thing is, if you make adjustments to your rig, then it's, um, you're not going to be able to use action templates that you saved to save animation. You won't be able to use those on rigs in future because if you change the rig, the action template doesn't work anymore. And if you don't know what an action template is, you can refer back to um, some tip of the week that I did earlier on templates. And okay, so at least I've got everything under one master peg, and and it's really useful for me to have. Oops, I'm missing one more layer. Where are you? Here, I can select the layer that's missing and I can search for it with the O key. So there we go, now I can see that somehow this one got disconnected, so then let's just go back and connect that one in there. All right. Okay, so the reason that I did that was because now I can collapse everything inside my master peg and I can extend the exposure with the F5 key throughout the scene. And um, so you can see here that I did change the drawing on that and some people will want to just do some frame by frame animation to change the drawing from uh, front to a profile and that's fine but um, it's also cool to be aware that you can morph this so if I select that layer go down to my timeline and hit O or shift O that's gonna bring me down here and um, I just wanted to prove to you guys if I move this over and I right click on that and do a morphing create morphing you see that it does morph very well between those two drawings. And I could even do a second morphing sequence because I had two drawings there. Let's just check it out on the second one as well. Let's morph from that one to the other one. So now you see I've got a morph going all the way from the front to the side. 
And naturally, as I'm animating the face over to the side, um, let's just collapse everything in my master peg again. And I'll create a keyframe with F6 on the first frame. I think I was going up until about frame 10, so I'll create another one with frame 10. And now I can select those facial features and I can move them over to the side so that this starts to make sense. And, um, and then I might even want to take this sort of eye on this side and scale it down a little bit. I want to take the ear and move it back. As I'm animating, by the way, I'm, I'm using the shortcuts B to, to go up the chain, up to the parent element, and Shift B to go back down to the child element. So and then the, the last thing I want to do on this one is I do want to animate the position of this ear over and I want to scale it up because you start to see more of the ear as it goes. And maybe I even want to just move this over relative to that set there.